Hi guys, Aaron Dorr here at the New York State Firearms Association, joined today with State Senator George Barillo from Western New York talking about Stand Your Ground Law. And George, you're leading the fight for this on our behalf in Albany for the 2022 session. Tell folks why you care about this bill so much. Well, you know, let me tell you something. Uh, first of all, living in New York State, uh, we knew two years ago when these disastrous so-called criminal justice reforms were going into place that New York was going to become a far more dangerous place. Oh yeah. And uh, now we're seeing the reality of that. Here we are at the beginning of 2022 and we've seen sp spikes in crime in almost every category yeah. uh, and the reality is uh, the the majority of Democrats in, in New York State their solution is uh, is more restrictions on law-abiding gun owners instead of cracking down on criminals and that's really why I'm so passionate about this and the Second Amendment and preserving our constitutional right to keep and bear arms. So you mean that gun control doesn't like stop criminals from from assaulting innocent people <laughs> I mean that's the thing the news every single day it's one more horrific homicide, a double homicide, a rape, an armed robbery. And innocent New Yorkers are getting terrified right now, in some cases, just to go out of their home. And so, if anything right now, what we need is less gun control, obviously, and stand your ground law will go a long ways towards restoring some sanity and showing the criminals that, hey, these folks might fight back. Because right now, just to be clear, so that for those who don't know, there is a de facto obligation to retreat in New York if you are attacked in public in some cases, even in your own home, depends on the jurisdiction. And so what your bill would do then, George, is it first of all removes that requirement to retreat because we shouldn't have to. Well, that's it exactly. And keep in mind that 36 states, including some blue states uh, yeah. like California, yeah. they have a stand your ground law. And it is the appropriate thing to do because people should not have to retreat, especially on their own property, <laughs> especially in a public place. Uh, and if you are legal, in legal possession uh, of a firearm and you are illegally in You're lawfully place, present. Exactly. exactly. Lawfully present somewhere, uh, you should be able to defend yourself, defend your family, uh, and then, of course, not face not only a criminal prosecution, but then here in New York State, the most litigious state in the nation, oh, yes. you should not face civil prosecution either. Well, that's number one, as it removes that requirement to retreat. And so, again, if you're lawfully present, so it can't be used to help a criminal, you have to be lawfully present, you can use force without having to retreat. And as you mentioned there, there is criminal immunity language built into your bill now. And so the idea here is that if you broke the law and used unjustifiable force, you should stand trial for that. But if you didn't, we shouldn't be arrested just because a prosecutor wants to send a political message. And we're seeing that Mark McCloskey in Missouri. We saw Kyle Rittenhouse in Wisconsin. And more and more, it seems like in certain jurisdictions, prosecutors are trying to advance a personal or ideological agenda, not pursuing actual justice. Well, that's it. And you're, you're seeing now uh, that uh, DA in, in many parts of, uh, of New York State and, and in blue states no longer stands for district attorney. It's, it stands for defense attorney. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you're, 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 you're seeing that right now in New York uh, with, with this new Manhattan DA who has basically said, unless you're committing murder, we're yeah. not going to prosecute you. We're not going to send you to jail. So now more than ever, uh, with the situation here in New York as violent as it has become, yes. people need the right to stand their ground. Because these, because these prosecutors in many cases never touched the mostly peaceful protesters in 2020. Yeah. They burned looted, you know, and, just, and, and marauded their way across our state and across our country. And it wasn't just here in New York, but in many jurisdictions, they never were brought to trial. And so we have to do something to deal with these prosecutors who seem to have a singular agenda and in many cases, not justice anymore. But as you also mentioned, George, we also have civil immunity in this bill as well, because it's one thing to survive the actual encounter in the street and then the court action afterwards only then to be, to be bankrupted in a two-year-long civil case, and that happens a lot here in New York State. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it's, uh, it's very expensive, even when you're in, in the right. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, we live in, in, a, in a state that's filled with trial lawyers who are constantly looking uh, for an opportunity to take on a case like this. Yes. Uh, even if it's just, and, and there's certainly a lot of uh, 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 people out there that feel that even if I'm in the wrong, I might get a check. Anyway, yeah, and that's or their really, estate. Yeah, yeah, and that's <coughs> it, it, it's sad because really you you are at the end of the day the vast vast majority of legal gun owners are law abiding citizens. The last thing that they want to do ever is to pull that trigger. Exactly. Uh, so the bottom line is this gives you the confidence that if it gets to that point, uh, yep. and you are you are able to not only defend yourself at the moment, but you will have uh, the, the opportunity uh, to be defended, uh, and in the end be acquitted of, of your constitutional rights. Exactly. And how this bill does that in particular, then, when it comes to the civil side, it simply says, if you're not 
charged criminally or found not guilty, you cannot be brought into civil court. And if you are, because you're always going to find a judge somewhere who will grant that kind of a case, we're creating a pretrial immunity hearing in the bill. And so before you spend a half a million dollars in civil court, we're going to deal with that on the front side. You know, the final piece here to this bill, George, is very personal to you. When I first met you, you mentioned this to me, and that is it covers the threatened use of force. Uh, the Mark McCloskey case. Here's a case where, and in each case is, of course, different, but here was a case where a guy was kind of being uh, challenged by 300 violent criminals. But it could be just one person. It could be any use of force where the goal for us as gun owners is always to, de to have the situation calm down and not have to use that firearm. And that oftentimes means presenting your firearm or referring to your firearm and never having to pull that trigger. That's the goal that we want as gun owners. But in New York right now, that threatened use of force is a criminal action. There is no protection for a, let's call it the justifiable threatened use of force. And that needs to be fixed because otherwise we're going to be facing charges just because we threatened to use force in self-defense. Yeah, and it is personal for me. My own father was caught up in a situation like this uh, a few years back. Uh, he was uh, on his own property and he was confronted by a convicted felon. Uh, and th that convicted felon actually accused my father of brandishing a weapon, which my father did not do. Uh, but uh, in the end, the police showed up and uh, without any due process, yep. without even being arrested, my father's guns were confiscated. And it took him over a year to get those guns <coughs> back. On the word of a convicted felon, no other witnesses, my father's due process rights were taken away and his constitutional rights were taken away on the spot. A Vietnam veteran who has served this country, a small yeah. business owner, uh, and, and someone who in the end uh, lost uh, his guns and, and it took a lot of time and a lot of money to get those guns back. And that was back in the day. Yeah. It's only gotten worse now. So no wonder the, the criminals aren't afraid of anything anymore because why should they be? Most people can't own a firearm because of New York State gun laws. And if they do, and if they dare draw it, many times it's the gun owner. It's you and me or your father who's going to be in trouble with the system. So this, this, this bill, folks, would be a comprehensive overhaul of New York's entire self-defense laws. And it would give us the real protections that we need, both in criminal and civil court, following a justifiable use of force. The question always comes up, though, George. Why are we even bothering going on offense? It's New York State. Do um, you think that you're going to have the governor actually sign this bill? And it's a fair question. There's been a lot of depressing, the depressing news for, for, for years for gunners in New York State. But the reality is that if we only... If we only ever stay on defense, we're always ceding that territory to the, the gun grabbers who want to disarm us. And in that vacuum, then, we see more and more and worse and worse gun control bills being filed because if we don't push back, they're going to push their agenda in that same space. Well, look, at uh, we're talking about stand your ground. We also have to stand our ground politically. We have to say oh, yeah. this is where we're drawing the line. <clears throat> and we want to know if you're an elected official, if you're a member of the state legislature, if you're a candidate for the state legislature, yeah. Where do you stand on Stand Your Ground? Yes. And uh, where do you stand uh, on our fundamental constitutional rights? Yes. Especially the right to keep and bear arms. And that's why this piece of legislation is important. And quite frankly, we saw 2020 uh, you know, as a, a huge step backwards for, for our safety here in New York State especially. And then in 2021, uh, we started to see uh, a turnaround. We saw a red wave, even here in New York State. Uh, and people are starting to understand that we have to hold our elected officials accountable, whether they're Republicans or Democrats. Uh, where do you stand on my rights? Where do you stand on our freedoms? And exactly. that's why this bill is important. And folks, this is now where we as gunners can do our job to push this agenda now. So as you, as you heard him say, we have to be asking now, asking your incumbents, asking your candidates, Republicans, Democrats, candidates, whatever, where do you stand on this bill? Will you fight for gun owners or just kind of sit back and do nothing. We've had plenty of people sit back and do nothing for a long time. We need folks to lead in this fight now. So take a moment, hit the link below, take action, talk with your lawmakers and ask them where you stand on this, especially if they're a Republican. We want to see them, you know, get off the bleachers and get engaged in this fight. You know, last point here, George, is that we had a similar bill 
filed right in the last week or two in Congress by Congressman Matt Gates from Florida. And what Matt said in talking to us was, it's the same idea. If we're always on defense, in his case, we're letting Nancy Pelosi run the agenda nonstop. The same thing applies here. If we're always on defense in New York State, we're never going to be trying to push back against the out-of-control gun grabbers in, in the state capitol. So thank you, George, for leading the fight for this bill. And guys, again, do your job now. Hit the link below, send your email, sign your petition, and tell your legislators in Albany to get on the Stand Your Ground Law Bill with George Varello. Thank you very much. Thank you.